Hey, what's up everybody? Let's look at some more of the Game Fest 2 CD. So, um, I was gonna go ahead and get started on the VGA games on the CD, and uh, I hopefully will soon. But, um, before I do, uh, I do want to go back to the Andorian Tales, because last time in the previous video, um, I had problems getting the, uh, the Andorian Tales, uh, set up. Uh, it was trying to look for floppy disks, and of course I don't have a an actual floppy drive on this computer, and it was it just wasn't working with uh, with having all the files in one folder as I, as I or in one directory as I did. So I went ahead and got the full version. I actually have the full version. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get in there and uh, let's take a look at it. Let's see what do I? Oh, hold on. Do I have, do I have to install this as well? No, I think it's already installed here, right? Yeah, I just run SW for Smithware, which I believe is the name of the. Here, there we go. Yeah, Smithware. Copyright Smithware 1993. That was a good year, sometimes. In some ways. So yeah, so that sword suddenly becomes a different color, and then it presents something. And there we go, yeah. Yen Dorian Tales, book one. You can see this is uh, kind of high-resolution EGA graphics. So yeah, so about the authors. Okay, these are the credits. Um... Um, this is probably a nice story, but I'm going to go ahead and not read it since... Wow, that candle flame is really... <laughs> I like how the candle flame pauses to let the guy flip the page on that book. That candle flame is, is freaking out. Like, that's a, that's a, that candle flame is on amphetamines, but when that guy pauses... When that guy suddenly flips the page in the book, then the, the candle flame just pauses for a moment. Like, oh, out of respect for this monk who's turning the page, I'm going to stop freaking out for a moment. Also, that guy reads very fast. He reads an entire two pages in about five seconds. Those those monks must learn to read very fast. Anyway, okay, let's um, let's not fool around here too much. I mean, I should really. Okay, so let's see. Can I just play? I don't think so. I probably have. Yeah, I need to assemble some players, and I think before I do that, I have to create some. Yeah, I have to. So first, I have to create a character. Uh, sex, yes, please. Uh, this is one of those old-fashioned games where you only have male and female options. Of course, games made today would have fifty different options, or just or just other. At least they'd probably have an, a, an option for none of the above or something like that. Uh, I'm sure. Let's let's say I'm a male. Okay, so what classes do we have? Minor, rogue, cleric, or pupil, and wizard pupil. Oh, I see. Uh, a pupil, a, a, a cleric pupil, a, a, so like a junior cleric and then a junior wizard. Um, interesting that there's no fighter. I guess the, the, the equivalent here of a fighter is a minor. Okay, fine. Oh, and we can choose our picture here. That's the default picture. That's a pretty nice default picture. Um, this guy looks... This guy looks noble. He looks like a paladin. And this guy looks like a kind of like a rogue. But I think these guys are all... I don't know. I'm actually not sure. I think, yeah. So these guys with the crosses hanging from their necks, I think these guys are supposed to be the clerics. And then, yeah, and then I think these guys are supposed to be the, the wizards. Let me come back to this guy. So this guy's, I think these, the first guys are supposed to be miners. And then I think this guy, these guys are supposed to be rogues. Yeah, so there's five of each. So there's, there are five of, five pictures of each category. So just pick, I don't know, just, just, Pick the default one, sure, why not? Name, okay, I'll put in a name. Right, and then you can click on the dice here to roll the stats. So you can, you know, like roll different stats and see what numbers come out. It, it doesn't really matter, I mean, that's that's fine. I'll go ahead and choose that. Okay, now can I assemble party members? I only have the one, but that's fine. Oh, there's actually a little check mark there that shows up. Okay, fine, can I? Okay, can I play now? Probably not going to have very good survival chances with just one party member. I think I should have assembled a party of, of several people, but anyway. Yeah, so this is the Andorian Tales, book one. I mean, it's... Uh, if it looks like Ultima, I think that's intentional. I'm pretty sure that this is meant to be kind of a uh, kind of an Ultima... Um, Ultima-inspired game. Let's see. If I remember right, if you press T... You see these icons here at the bottom? You can use these to do things. This is obviously talk, and then over here you have more options here. Um, but I think if we just press T, that invokes talk as well. So yeah, there we go. So I can talk to this guy. Welcome to Se Se 
Kate, Sakate. And I think it's kind of like an ultimate. You can say name. Yeah, his name is Warren. Job. I guard this end of the town. You can say bye to say you can say bye to leaf, but let's let's see what else. Can I ask you about town? Since Sakate is the closest town to the mines, many of the miners enjoy relaxing and drinking in the tavern. They also pick up all their supplies in the mine shop. Okay. Thanks, Warren. Um War and Peace. So yeah, anyway, um uh, it's uh in many ways, it's a fairly usual RPG, but there's something about this game that always appealed to me. I think it's just, a lot of it is just the graphics. I don't really, it, it's something I can't necessarily put my finger on, but just something about these graphics and the way they're done, just just the, the nature of these sort of high resolution EGA graphics and how much detail there is and the little things like, like in this little bedroom here, they bothered to draw what looks like a, a cup of water, or maybe a bowl of water, and that white thing, what is that, a towel or something? And I don't know what the thing about that is, but just all these little details that they put into the graphics, I just, I always had a very nice, a very pleasant feeling when playing this game because of just all the, the little details that went into the things that, uh, that comprise these towns. In terms of the gameplay, I mean, if you go outside the town, let's run into some some random monster and get into okay here's a centipede right or that's a lot of centipedes so i mean okay is a attack yes a is attack so i mean i can attack these centipedes and i don't think i'm doing very well i'm probably going to die oh in fact I, I just i did just die oh and the game automatically restored the save game okay anyway so i mean yeah what 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 shall I, wait where's my character oh my character is not being displayed oh oh my character is a, a star He's a, can I, how do I, uh, hold on, can I still talk to people? Yes, I can. As a floating spirit, I can still somehow manage to talk to people. That's pretty special. Can I get into fights? Uh, what? I think the game glitched. Uh-oh. That's not good. Um, that's quite annoying. Uh, that means uh, crud. That means I will probably have to kill DOSBox and restart it. Okay, well, that was unfortunate, but <laughs> okay, this has been Yandorian Tales Book One. Let me go ahead and. Um, Close DOS box for a second, and let's see if I restart it. Is it gonna? Yeah, there we go. Um, I need to remount everything though because um, because I actually use a different uh, folder. So DOS box root is my usual DOS box folder, but I have uh, what did I call it? I think DOS box game fest two, and then. I have the Game Fest 2 CD copied to, I think it's just Game Fest 2 CD. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. There are the files there. And then here, yeah, and here's the Game Fest 2 CD. Okay, that's fine. And yeah, um, I did, uh, there is the Endorian Tales 2, as you can see here. Um, I guess, yeah, let's go ahead and, what do I run here? SWREG? Oh, please run it from ch2.bat. Okay, fine. So, you can see the presentation here is... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hello, can I please get a main menu of some, of some persuasion? Can I please get a main menu? Thank you. Uh, where's quit? Oh, control Q is quit. You know, what I need to do is uh, turn the volume down because that is a bit loud. Okay, let's try this again. So you can see the second game is um, a much more professional presentation in many ways. It's, that's, that's still kind of loud in my opinion. 
at 40% volume, it's still a little too loud for me. Um, so, I mean, the first game didn't have any, mu <clears throat> any music. This game has music. The first game um, had only 16 color graphics. This has 256 color graphics. But the resolution went down. This is, I think, mode 13, you know, um, 256 color, uh, 320 by 200 graphics, whereas the first game was 16 color graphics in a higher resolution, probably 640 by 400 or maybe by 480, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, this game is a lot more professionally done. It has a soundtrack, it has sound effects and things like that, but it's really just somehow a little bit less special. Hold on, can I somehow, is there some way I can, can I please skip the intro and do, okay, so let's see, can I just say enter the game? No, I can't, I have, okay, I have to, after one's going to go through character creation, um, pick a class, okay, fighter, pick a portrait, um, I don't know, this guy looks like he's a little bit astonished to be in this game, I don't know, pick this guy, why not, okay, uh, am I done, do I have the character now, can I assemble him into the party, oh, I think, um, uh, I think somehow it ended up not creating that character, but I still have... Can I... Okay. It comes with four pre-created characters, so that's fine. Let's just turn them on and start the game. There we go. Done. Okay, enter the game. So, um... There we go. So... This is the Endorian Tales 2, and you can see it's it's a fairly usual sort of first-person adventure, uh, not adventure, uh, RPG, in the vein of games like, you know, the famous Dungeon Master, um, Wizardry, Eye of the Beholder, all those, I mean, how many games are there like this with, uh, which have a very similar sort of interface? I mean, there are tons of them. Um, and as far as these types of games go, oh, the ants reproduced while, uh, while I was fighting them. That's, uh, that's multitasking. Um... There we go, we got 40 gold coins, 4 new war, and 12 experience. That's nice. Okay, I think we can exit out of this now. Let's exit to DOS. Do you want to exit to DOS now? Yes, I do. Yeah. So, I mean... Those are the two Yandorian Tales games. The first one, as I said, is very much like Ultima. I think it pretty much just takes its cues from Ultima. The second one takes its cues from any number of first-person dungeon crawls like that. Um... Although amusingly, it actually started in a dungeon, and we didn't run into any monsters until we went outside the dungeon. But, but I mean, you know, the second game is, as I said, it's more professionally done. It looks like a, a decent game. It looks like more like a, a game that would sell. But I always had more of an affinity for the first game because, you know, the first game has no music. It's actually it has almost no sound whatsoever. Occasionally, it beeps a little bit, and that's it. Um, but just the the. the it somehow could just create such a nice atmosphere with its graphics. You know, some of the environments are very nice to explore. Some of the indoor environments, the outdoor environments aren't very special most of the time, but the indoor environments are just sometimes... I just really like the little touches, like I said. You know, just it creates a, a nice sense of being inside um, a little town where people actually live and you can talk to the people and see their little knickknacks and things that they have around their houses and shops and things like that. I always just had a very pleasant uh, feeling when I played that game because uh, it, it really feels like somebody took the time and care to put all those little touches into the towns, and that means a lot to me. Um, but other than that, I mean, from the gameplay, you know, it's, it's an RPG. I mean, you get into random fights and fight a lot of things and die most of the time because your enemies are very tough. Anyway, let's get back to... Um, Let's get back to the Game Fest 2 CD, and uh, I had last time finished the EGA games. Let's go ahead and go on to the VGA games now. And we start off with none other than Doom. Now, I think this is a game that everybody knows, but I don't think I've ever played it on my channel before, and since it's here... 
yeah i mean okay come on let's sure let's let's play it i mean why not it's Oh, I have to, okay, there's, yeah, there's this install thing, this common mechanism that uh, id software had. Please distribute like crazy. Uh, yeah, Doom SW is fine for Doom Shareware. Man, back in the days when people still used LHARC encryption. I remember when LHARC was still L-H-A-R-C, and then it later became L-H-A. Now it's not really used at all anymore, but yeah, man, Yoshi. Okay, um, do I want keyboard and mouse? I'll just do keyboard only. I'm, I'm that old school. Yeah, Sound Blaster is fine. Yeah, that should be fine. Sound Blaster, sure. Do I have an RQ7 or 5? I don't know. I'll say, uh, uh, yeah, four channels, come on. All right, let's give it a try. Will this work? Sounds like it's working. Okay. Provided by Ed free of charge. Suggested re retail price is nine bucks. All right. So, I mean, let's see. Options. Make the screen a little bit bigger. Start a new game. Yeah, this is the shareware version, so... I actually can play the shareware version even on Ultraviolence. It's actually... I'm not very good at this game, but the, the shareware version is not that difficult. So let's go ahead and do... Ultraviolence. And on this level, yeah, on this level you have these two guys up here, so we need to deal with them first. Oh, and you've got the other two guys down there. I forgot about them. Okay, I'm not doing very well. I haven't played this game in a very long time. I never, I never really... I'm going to go ahead and be that guy who makes an edgy, controversial opinion, and I'll say I never really liked Doom that much. It's it's not a bad game. I'm not saying it's a terrible game, but it, it's just I I never really saw what, what was the big deal about it. I always thought it was kind of overhyped, and I think the reason for that I I thought about it the other day because I knew I was going to play this game uh, when I was thinking about making the next video of Game Fest Two. And I kind of thought about it, and I thought, why is it that everybody just completely lost their minds over Doom and thought it was the great greatest game ever? And I was just always kind of skeptical about it. What is it about this game that I don't like? Well, it's not that I dislike this game, like I said. It's it's an okay game. It's just, I think the thing is just that um, by the time this came out, I had already played Wolfenstein, um... And before I, played, before I ever played Wolfenstein, I did in fact play the Catacomb Abyss, which I previously featured on my channel. And, um, you know, a lot of people had never seen a game like this before. When people played Doom, for many people it was their first first-person shooter. And so in that sense for them it was revolutionary because... You know, if you've never seen a game like this before and you've played, spent your whole life playing Zork and Pong or whatever... Nothing against Zork and Pong, both are good games, but... You know, if, if, this, is, if this was your first first-person shooter, then okay, I understand. You have some positive memories associated with it. There is a certain specialness that goes into the first... Um, the first time that you've ever seen a game like this, if you've never played a shooter before. But I had played... Again, I had played Wolfenstein for quite a while before playing this. And so for me it was kind of like... I just didn't... I just didn't really get it, you know? I realize, okay, it, it is a step up from from Wolfenstein. Yeah, obviously the, the levels are capable of being more advanced because uh, they're not at right angles to each other. I mean, I know the maps in Wolfenstein are all just grids. They're just 2D grids. And so everything has to be orthogonal, and yeah, obviously you can you can see right here, you can see in stuff like this, obviously the level architecture in Doom is capable of being more, more intricate, more complicated, but um, so what? I mean, yeah, it, it, the maps are more involved than they are in Wolfenstein, but it's still the same basic game, and I guess... 
I guess when I play games like this, I prefer a more realistic setting. And I guess uh, something I liked about Wolfenstein was its its relatively real world setting. I mean, I, I know Castle Wolfenstein itself doesn't uh, is a fictional castle, but but I mean, at least the whole premise of it is uh, you know is is believable. But I mean, this, this whole thing about about uh, combining literal hell with uh, with some kind of science fiction setting, so it's like you open a portal to, to hell and it sort of invokes, it's like a cross between, uh, I don't know, it's like a cross between the alien movies and, and some other goofy sort of science fiction horror comic book kind of settings. It's just... I don't know. It's just a mishmash of different things, and it just—I just don't really—I don't really go for the setting very much. And that said, again, I—I I, I like Doom. I mean, I played this game quite a bit. I had some fun with it. It's—it's it's a fun game. I mean, it's—I'm uh, confused by how polarizing it was. Some people really loved this game, and some people really hated this game. And I was one of the few people I knew who just somehow managed to be fairly neutral about it and just thought, you know, I mean, it's it's fun, okay, you know, Doom, it's a, it's a fun game to play around with and, uh, you know, you shoot some things and you run around and you do a bit of this and that and then, uh, you know, you go to the end of the level and that, that was it, that was Doom. This was Doom, man. Uh, I mean, it's... it, it wasn't... It wasn't that revolutionary to me. It wasn't to me. It wasn't as revolutionary as a game like Wolfenstein, because Wolfenstein was really the game that that put first-person shooters on the map and turned them into an industry. And then this game, this was the game that kind of, you know, refined them a bit and and introduced again non-orthogonal maps. But other than that, the violence isn't even that extreme. People thought that the violence in this game was really very intense, but I don't know, is it, is it really that violent? Is it really much more violent than than any other? I don't know. I don't really... I, I, ne I never really got this game. I mean, it, it still holds up today as a fun game, as most good games do. I mean, a game that was fun 20, 30 years ago is still going to be fun today, but it's just, you know, it's... Uh, I I don't like being in the dark like this. I, I don't like dark environments. I mean, what's the fun of a place where you can't see anything? I'd rather be able to see where I'm going, even though it's... It, okay, it's not that dark here, but... Anyway, I mean... Oh, I hope people aren't going to complain about me being too negative about one of their favorite childhood games that they have so many good childhood nostalgic memories of. I mean, I'm not trying to rain on Doom or say that it's a bad game. Again, it's... I, I had fun with it. Hey, don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. It's 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 fine. It's it's okay. Doom is fun. It's good. It's okay. I like it, but I I, I just uh, I don't understand why some people just just completely just flipped out about it and thought, wow, this is the most revolutionary thing to ever happen to computer gaming. I just didn't really. I don't know. What can I say? It's Doom. Everybody knows Doom. I think I, I really I really doubt that there's anybody watching this who's never seen Doom before. So let's move on. What else do we have under VGA games? Yeah, another um, Raptor. Yeah, okay. I don't think I've ever featured this game on my channel, so let's go ahead and play Raptor. I mean, you look at the, the marketing blurbs here. I mean, here it says, uh, you know, this is the game others are compared to. And then here it just says, good game. I, I like how it says uh, it says all these things, and at the end it just says, good game. And then here it says, this is one game you don't want to miss. All, all these marketing kind of gee whiz blurbs about the different games. Uh, let's see, do I have to install this as well? Oh, no, this apparently is already un, uh, unarchived, so I can probably just, do I just run wrap? Yes, I do. Okay. Wait. PC speaker. Okay, I guess I need to... Yeah, I'm not hearing music here, so I'm going to guess that I need to install the... Uh... Is this going to... Yeah, it's it's PC speaker sound. Okay, hold on. Let me let me quit this and uh, configure the... Uh, configure the game quickly. Where's the uh, setup? So, music card, sure, sound blaster, yes. Sound effects, sound blaster, yes, yes, yes. Yes. 
controller, uh, keyboard. Okay, done. All right, now let's try running it again. That looks a little better. There you go, that's a great intro. I say that only half sarcastically. Um, okay, game options, I think this game did, yeah, okay. Sound volume and that's that's it. Well, you can choose between high and low detail. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start a uh, new game. So you can choose, here you can choose between four different pictures. You have these two guys and these two women. Um, I am not a woman, but I usually played as this with this picture just because I preferred seeing her picture to seeing some guy's picture every time. I don't know. I don't know if that's sexist, but anyway. Um, name, light blight, call sign, also light blight? Sure, why not? I'll do training mode, some bad at games. Ah yes, Harold's Death Emporium. This guy, Harold, um, he's like the only character in the game. It's it's funny because this, this game has no plot. It has is it has no plot whatsoever, and it really um, it like I said, it doesn't even have characters. It just has that one guy, Harold, and he has no personality other than just being that face that shows up when you enter this shop to buy things. Um, some of you might remember, uh, not too long ago, I did a video on the Akinator, that thing that tries to guess various fictional characters. And I really wanted to do Harold. I really wanted to see if it could guess Harold from this game. Uh, because he's a character that's not really... he doesn't get enough attention. But, uh, I mean, really... I don't think I could be able to answer anything about Harold. Like, what, what do we know about him other than that he's the guy who sells weapons in Raptor? We have no idea about any of his character history or anything. That he's not, he's not really a very well-realized character, so I don't think the Akinator would have been able to guess him. So, um, I refrain from trying to do that. Uh, let's see. So we have various weapons here. Um, let's buy this. This is the boss, uh... Boss health indicator, and that's it. I'm out of money, so let's just go ahead and fly a mission. Yeah, autopilot. Why not? Autopilot automatically take automatically takes you to the next level that you haven't done yet. So, so there you go. This is Raptor. Man, that is loud. Hold on. Can I? Is there a way that I can? Can I twiddle the options here without? Okay. Hold on. Return a game. I'm sorry. I mean, maybe I don't know how loud it'll be in the video, but just in my in my headphones, it's it's really loud. Anyway, okay. So yeah, once again, this is Raptor. So it's your basic vertical scrolling kind of shooter. I mean, it looks like a fairly ordinary game in my opinion, and it is fairly ordinary. I mean, it's really it doesn't do a lot to to distinguish itself from games of this category. I think the um, the thing that um, kind of distinguished it at the time, besides the fact that it was released by Apogee, which was of course a big name in the industry, is is just the um, the graphics. I mean, these graphics were not bad for the time. These are pretty nice looking graphics for the time, but the gameplay is very um, it's fairly monotonous. I mean, the gameplay is not that imaginative. I, in my mind, I often compare this game to Major Striker. I think I featured Major Striker on my channel before when I was doing the first Game Fest CD. And, you know, Major Striker is pretty much the, um, the ideological opposite of this game. This game just goes for great graphics, but it has zero story, no characters, and nothing really much in the gameplay other than just really just fairly monotonous shooting, to be honest. Um, Major Striker has... Um, 
Well, it doesn't have much of a plot, but, bef you know, before every segment, before every mission area, there's that blue-haired woman who shows up and briefs you and talks to you and flirts with you a little bit, which, it's a small thing, but it means a lot. It really goes a long way toward making the game feel a little more like a, like a proper story, like a proper game experience, and not just, you know, jumping into the shooting and just blowing up a bunch of stuff. Um... That said, when I do want to just play a game like this to relax and have some fun, I do tend to play this game more than Major Striker. The reason being that this game is a little more forgiving, because you see that, that health... Yeah, see, I just got hit. You see that health meter on the right, or armor meter or whatever? When you get hit, you lose some armor, and that's it. So obviously, if your armor gets down to zero, then, okay, you blow up and you die. But, um... This game is relatively relatively forgiving in the sense that you can you can get hit a few times. You can get hit several times without dying instantly. In Major Striker, it's basically one hit kills. If you get hit once, you you die unless you have a shield or something like that or a power up. But if you if you get hit once, then you lose your power. If you actually lose the power up that you have, and then you're a sitting duck, then with the next hit you die. Whereas in a game like this, getting hit doesn't cause you to lose anything. Except, uh, except a little bit of your shielding. So, you know, Major Striker, it's, it's a nice game. It, it does a lot of things that vertical scrolling shooters don't do or should do better. So there's a lot to say about Major Striker. There are a lot of good things to say about that game. But just in terms of its, um, its difficulty level, it's just, it's very unforgiving. Because, again, if you get hit once, there are serious consequences. Either you lose your power-up completely, um, or you die. You just blow up instantly. Um, whereas in a game like this, you know, it's... I mean, this is kind of a, a dumb game. You know, there's, there's not a lot of intelligence to it. You just hold down the fire button and just move around and shoot everything. That's it. That's the whole game. But it, it's, it's relaxing. It's the kind of thing that, you know, you can play when you just feel stupid and just want to play something dumb for 10 minutes or whatever. So I probably played... I... When I think back on these games, I probably play this game... I'm more likely to play this game than Major Striker if I just want to have some quick fun. Because this game is quick fun. It's stupid escapist fun. Major Striker is more like the kind of game where you have to really f focus on what you're doing and really try to avoid getting hit because, uh, again, it's it's uh, kind of one-hit kill. So, so I mean, th there we go. That's Raptor. It strikes me that um, the last three games that I featured now have all sort of been along the same same lines. They've all been games, uh, so the Endorian Tales 2, Doom, and uh, Raptor. They're all games that kind of riff off previous games. The Endorian Tales 2, of course, as I said, uh, it's basically, it basically follows in the line of several different first-person RPGs. Uh, Doom follows on the heels of games like Wolfenstein and Catacomb Abyss, and then Raptor imitates any number of vertical scrolling shooters. And all of these games, uh, besides being not very original in their presentation, they all really just go for the graphics. They go for the presentation. They try to wow you with their nice looking graphics and sound and things like that. And the result is that all of them are just kind of, they're a little bit lacking, you know, like they, they look great. They're, they're good looking games. But just somehow, they, I feel like they're all lacking something in terms of the gameplay department. They all are, they just are not quite as much fun as the games that preceded them and the games that they're trying to imitate, in my opinion. Okay, and then we come to a couple of games from Alive Software. Actually, both of these are from Alive Software. This is just a concentration game. Do we really need... Hold on, what's coming up? Tank Wars. Oh, cool. Tank Wars. Oh, Scud Attack. Those are fun games. Um, okay, maybe I'll save those for the next video. Okay, I'll just go ahead and end here then with a couple of... A um, couple of... Uh, couple of fairly generic games. I mean... Uh, can I just run VC or do I have to run Setup first? Warning, run setup program, set up VC first. Okay, let's go ahead and set up venture capital. Um, oh boy. Remember the days when you had these different companies and they all had their different VJs, SVJ standards and then VEC came out and VEC sort of changed everything because it was... Okay, um, I guess I can use a mouse in this game. Hmm. 
I'm tempted to say kids level because I'm bad at games, but let's let's be really um uh, Oh. Hmm. Tough decision there, but I'm playing in DOSBox, so I can probably regulate the, I can probably modulate the speed with, with DOSBox cycles if I need to. So yeah, save above settings, creating configuration file. Alright, let's try running VC now. Oh, this is uh this appears to be a uh, well it doesn't appear to be it, it is it's it's um, it's the, the entertainer by Scott Joplin um, but what is this head from is this a is this a famous statue if anybody knows let me know what what this head is because I, I have a feeling that this is some famous uh, probably Greek or Roman or something, uh, sculpture, or, or maybe it's from a coin. It looks like it actually might be the head on, a, on some ancient coin. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is shareware. Okay, we can register for 20 bucks. Well, uh, okay, live software in Santa Clara, California. Uh, okay, all right. So we have two options, silhouettes and sports. Um, I don't know, I don't know much about sports, so I'll, I don't really know much about silhouettes either, but okay. Well, there you go. Uh, we need to find, okay, I think, oh, I think uh, it's because I put ex expert mode. I think kids mode and novice mode have different themes. They all have different uh, like themes to these tiles. So expert mode gives you uh, silhouettes and sports. There you go, no, there you know. So I have a caribou and a leaf star and an airplane. Heart, ostrich, dachshund, beetle, crab, uh, is that a moth or a bee or some a frog, rabbit? I have not seen one. I have not seen one repeating thing yet. Not a good sign. Oh, okay. I just saw a rabbit. Where was the rabbit? Was it here or was it here? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there it was. Okay. Oh, and it plays a little sound effect like that. That's cute. I always like that. It just just plays a little sound effect like that when you... I mean, it's nothing special. It was like three MIDI notes, but just stuff like that is kind of... I like little details like that in software, you know, where they just they play little... Just just very gentle, light, subtle sound effects to add to the experience. That, that kind of thing really means a lot to me. I can't really explain why. I can't say why it means so much. I mean, you can say it's just... It's something very simple and... And yeah, it is something very simple, but it just, I, I like little touches like that in software. Um, okay, where was the heart? It was here, wasn't it? No, that was that was the airplane. Okay, that was the heart. Oh, it actually changes the pitch of the notes as you go along. Have we seen a seahorse before? No, I don't think we have, no. Okay, that was just luck. Oh, we've had, we have seen a crab. There we go, there's the crab. Oh, we have seen a leaf. Where was the leaf? Was that? No, that wasn't. Where was the leaf? There is the leaf. Oh, and that bird was... No, not there. It's been somewhere around here. I know it was somewhere in this area. Yeah, there we go. Is that a skunk or a chipmunk? And that kangaroo. Yeah, a kangaroo was up there. Ostrich was... No. I keep going back to that airplane. Oh, wait, what? Where's the ostrich? What? Oh, ostrich was, no. What? Okay. What? Where the heck was the ostrich? I know I had an ostrich up here just a moment. Wait, what? Okay, that's seahorse. Okay. Am I completely? I was just thinking, I'm surprised at how well I'm remembering these little, uh, th these these pictures, actually, because I, I usually don't have a very good memory for these types of games, and then I suddenly started just completely flipping out, because I, I know I saw the ostrich, but now I can't remember where I saw the ostrich anymore. Anyway, okay, okay, that horse we've definitely seen. I think that's a horse. A fish I've not seen before on that, that type of dog I've not seen. Camel, where's the camel? That was here, yeah. Oh, and that... Moth. There we go. Chipmunk was 
there. Uh, oh, penguin. Frog. Frog was down here. Dachshund was there. Wow, I actually... I'm doing better than I thought I would. As I said, I usually don't have a good memory for these types of things. Maybe I've maybe my memory's actually gotten better as I got older. Usually it's the other way around. Usually you start becoming very forgetful when you get old, but somehow I'm doing It's probably just luck. I'm probably just doing better than than I thought because I underestimated underestimated, my, underestimated myself quite badly, so I can't like I'm remembering things, and but as I remember these locations of these tiles, I forget how to speak English. As as one thing comes into your mind, another thing leaves it, and then you you know you can, you never gain something without leaving something else behind. All right. Anyway, um, there is the ostrich, and where was the other ostrich? There it is. Okay. Somehow I thought it was up here. I don't know. I'm. I got some stuff mixed up, obviously. I'm still doing a lot better than I thought I would. As I said, I do, I do not have... One thing that I'm very bad at is rote memorization. I'm good at understanding concepts usually, but if I just have to memorize details without any context, I, I am usually terrible at that. But this is uh, not going too badly, I guess. Ah. Rooster was up here. Or hen. Is that a rooster or a hen? I don't know. Anyway, okay. Okay, and when you're done, you get the William Tell Overture. Okay, that's enough of that. Can I... Can I get out of this now? There we go. Okay. All right, very nice. So, I mean, you know, it's it's a concentration game. I mean, what's really there to say about it? It's it's a um, yeah, it's very generic. Um, but this this other game here, VGA Sharks. Now, this was um, just trying to think. Now, uh, there was also a game from Alive Software called something like Frogman's Adventure. Uh, in fact, if I run, hold on, if I run the Alive catalog, let's see here, Animal Quest, we've seen that here before. Magic Crayon, okay, it's uh, some children's color and shape thing. BC Jigsaw, okay, yeah, I mean, Jigsaw Puzzle. Crazy Shuffle, okay, is this kind of like memory game, so it's kind of like the one we just saw, I guess. Yeah, this is the game we just... Wait, no, this is a jigsaw. Okay, this is somewhat different. This is a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, there we go. This is the game we just saw. Now you can order over 300 colorful concentration cards for just 20 bucks. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, so you can see it has cartoons, animals, flags of Europe. Why only Europe? Why not the whole world? Objects, dinosaurs, sports, etc. Yeah, Scuba Man's Quest. So there was Scuba Man's Quest, and then there was, uh, oh yeah, Billy the Kid. Um, I don't know how Scuba Man's Quest is different from VJ Sharks. I think one came first, and then the other was sort of a, an extension of that. But anyway, um, Graph. Okay, we have only one option for Graph. Sound. Okay, that's, this can be off, speaker, or ad lib. Let's do ad lib. Point. Keyboard. Uh, I think this might be a good case for pointing with the mouse. Okay, start the game. Let's see, what do we have here? Um, so it's VGA Sharks 1.5. Wow, 10 episodes of this, pretty crazy. So, um, oh, this is going a bit fast. Let me slow down DOS box. Oh, that might be going too slow now. Hold on, is there, a ha is there a happy medium here? Okay, let's try this. Let's see if this will work out. So, the idea here is very simple. Uh, there's no cursor, but I'm, I'm moving that guy, I'm moving this guy in the orange scuba suit with the mouse. So what I want to do, actually, wait, what do I want to do? I actually don't know what I want to do now. I 
I just realized I don't know how to play this game. I played this game a lot, but I never figured out how to play it properly. Oh, I think that's the deal. Right, okay. Yeah. So these stingrays are dangerous, and you want to avoid getting sting ray duh, by them. And you need to collect that thing that's over there. So before it was some red fish, I guess, and now it's a blue thing, which is probably some blue fish. So. Right, so the deal is that you want to collect whatever stuff is floating around over here, and you want to avoid getting bitten by the stingrays. So the status line at the bottom shows you how many times you've been bitten, so bite equals zero right now, and then score is your score. You get points for, I guess you get 10 points for bringing stuff to your cage over there, and I think you get, you then get one point for successfully tranquilizing one of these stingrays. I also like how it's called VGA sharks, but the the opponents are actually not sharks, but stingrays. I think they're sharks that's some different... Uh, I think later on they're sharks. I seem to recall seeing a very different version of this game where everything was much smaller and it was VGA and it was... Uh, the sound was PC speaker sound. But the, the concept is the same. So basically, the... The reason why this is, as far as I know, the reason why this was called Alive Sharks, well, I think here it's called VGA Sharks, but I think it was originally called Alive Sharks. I think the whole point of this was just that um, the, the sharks, or in this case stingrays, but the enemies, the enemy fish, use artificial intelligence. And so people thought, wow, artificial intelligence is cool. That's, you know, artificial intelligence is the wave of the future. Um, but in looking at it now, it seems like the search algorithm used by these stingrays is very simplistic. It's basically just move directly toward the player. Well, I mean, it's not quite that simple. I mean, they, 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 there appears to be some randomness to their motions, so I don't know actually what, um, I don't know what logic is actually guiding them, because, yeah, they're, they're not actually just going directly toward me. They are, in fact obeying some slightly more convoluted movement algorithm, which is not clear to me. But, I mean, really, come on. In a situation like this, the smartest thing to do, the most effective hunt algorithm is probably just go straight towards the player. Because there, there is, there are no obstacles. There's nothing between us. So there is no advantage to following a convoluted path. Why not just send them straight for the player? That would be the smartest thing to do. So... I remember reading some of the marketing uh, and articles for this game, and people were saying, wow, artificial intelligence is cool, the game is so smart, the, the, the enemies actually track you down. But I mean, really, it's... Okay, this is level two now. I mean, it, it, it's trivial to make a, a search algorithm where the whole algorithm is just go directly towards wherever you are now. I mean, that's like one of the most basic programming exercises. You don't need to be an expert in artificial intelligence to... Uh, Level 2 appears to be harder because the thing that you're supposed to pick up also moves away from you. So your enemies move toward you and your targets actually move away from you, which is, obviously makes things harder. Um, so, I mean, yeah, in, in retrospect, this is something that really does not showcase advanced artificial intelligence in any kind of form, in, in my opinion. But, um, you know, it was... It was the 90s. It was a, a simpler time. It was a more innocent time when people thought that things moving directly toward you was uh, was an advanced form of artificial intelligence. Okay, what happens if I just keep getting bitten? How many bites can I sustain? There must be some practical limit. I've, I've, I've been bitten 20... Hold on. How many times can I get bitten, seriously? Does, does my character die, or, or does he just just absorb infinitely many bites? Is the limit 100, or, or what? I'm going to get to 100, and if, if he still keeps going after that, then I'm going to say he's some kind of invincible Superman who cannot be killed by any, by any physical means. I 
I mean, in, in real life, any real person would be dead, would be long dead by now. I mean, no, yeah, he's he's just he just keeps going. Yeah, I mean, uh, most people wouldn't survive one bite from a stingray like that. But I mean, okay, whatever. Let me just just get out of this. Wait, how do I get out of this? Uh, escape is not doing anything. Control Q is not doing anything. Control C is not doing anything. Uh, okay. Gosh, I don't know how to end this. Um, okay, I'll just leave it at that then. Uh, wow. This has been really quite, this has been really quite a mixed bag, hasn't it? First that thing at the beginning with Yandorian Tales 1. I mean, I mean Yandorian Tales is a it's 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 a nice game. I like the game and I've never had it crash on me like that. I don't know what happened there. Um but yeah, the rest of these games have been a little bit uh I don't know. I'm still kind of underwhelmed by them. Again, I'm unpopular opinion man. I I, I always I always liked Wolfenstein more than uh, more than Doom. Come at me, bro. Anyway, uh, okay. I will go ahead and end the video here. This has been more games from the Game Fest 2 CD. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed and that I will see you in future videos about more games for DOS. Until then, bye everyone and cheerio.